My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. In every rough and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Isaac and Jacob, Jehovah, you are the man of war. Your power and your forever and ever. Oh, pray, Jesus, holy name, the God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Jehovah, you are the king of kings. Your power endure forever and ever. Oh, praise his holy name. There are several battles the almighty God has fought on our behalf. I want you to begin to bless the name of the Lord for fighting your battles for you. The battles known and unknown. The battles within and without. The battles underneath and above. The battles around your life. Go ahead and bless the name of the Lord for fighting your battles for you. And you know, he has never lost a war. This, our God, is extraordinarily powerful. Whenever he fights, he wins. That is the Lord that we serve. And again and again and again, he has fought and has won the battles on your behalf. Go ahead and bless him. Bless him for all the battles you've been facing with that are now over. Bless him for the battles that are spiritual, the battles that are physical, the battles that are marital, the battles that are right there concerning your sister and body. He has fought all kinds of battles on your behalf. 
Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Call upon him and say, Father, today one more time, fight my battles for me. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Again, Daddy God, fight my battles for me. You are the almighty God, the Lord God of hosts himself. The Lord of hosts himself. Fight my battles for me today and let the name of the Lord be glorified. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Lord, we want to thank you because of the way you've been fighting our battles. Every time, every day, every moment, within and without, above and beneath, in and out, oh God, known and unknown, you've been magnifying yourself and you have been so casting your supremacy over the enemies of our lives. Take all glory, take all honor, take all adoration. And daddy God, as we we'll gather today again, calling upon you, on the prayer ring platform, let our battles again, O oh Lord, begin to face your wrath in the mighty name of Jesus. Fight our battles for us again one more time and let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Wherever you are, shout a resounding hallelujah. Today we want to engage in a particular warfare. And the message will be tied to war against the spirit of nothing. We take our test from Esther chapter 6, verse 2 to 3. Esther chapter 6, the book of Esther Chapter 6, verse 3 and verse 3. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bictana and Therese, two of the king chaplains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hands on the king Ahasuerus. Verse 3. And the king said, what honor and dignity had been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servant that ministered unto him, There is nothing done for him. Certain people take a coup d'etat. Their name are specifically mentioned here to be Bittana and Therese. They were the people appointed by the king himself to keep the door. And the, as security officer, they were to keep the life, to guide the life of the king. But then they decided to assassinate the king. Then somebody heard about it. Someone took notice of this. His name was Mordecai. And leaked the secret. And that is how the king could not be assassinated by these assassins. And right there, we are not told now how many years, but Days and months and years had rolled by, and they put the thing down in the, in the book of remembrance. So one day, the king could not sleep, and he began to open the book of remembrance. And right there, he found how it had been recorded there how Mordecai had saved the life of the king, and somehow. There are certain people right there in the palace. He called them. What dignity, what honor have been done to Mordecai for this? And all of them told the king nothing was done for him. Nothing. 
Could you believe that? Somebody rescued the king, and then nobody appreciated him. Nobody honored him. Nobody recognized him. Nobody praised him for that. They just forgot him. Just like that. There is a force, brethren, called the spirit of nothing. This force is in charge of labor loss. Our battles today, our war today, will be against this spirit of nothing. I want you to pray before we move on and let God hear your own prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, today, as I wage war against the spirit of nothing, against the spirit of no, against the spirit of rejection, against the spirit of abandonment, let the spirit of not around my life be destroyed today in the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer. The spirit of nothing around my life, let it be destroyed today. Ah, when that spirit was in charge of the life of Mordecai, it could not be remembered simply because there is a spirit in operation called the spirit of nothing. I reject you. You spirit of nothing, I cast you out. You spirit of nothing, in the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke your oppression in my life, and I cancel your oppression in my destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus, just the way you afflicted Mordecai for a short number of years, you won't have any role to play in my life. In the name of Jesus, I believe you are praying. I believe you are praying. I reject you. I rebuke you. I cast you out of my life. I cast you out of my environment. You spirit of nothing. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, this kingdom or this spirit of nothing normally operates with at least three other kingdoms. I want you to listen very because by the special grace of God, after today's prayer, labor loss will be a stranger to you in the name of Jesus. The first kingdom is the kingdom in charge of absolute no. They are the one in charge of what we refer to as capital no. According to Jeremiah chapter 46, verse 25, Jeremiah chapter 46, verse 25, listen to what the Almighty God Himself has said. The Lord of hosts, the God of Israel said, Behold, I will punish the multitude of no. There is a kingdom known as the kingdom of no. Ah, we are refer. That kingdom is oppression. Anyone who is under the influence of this kingdom, nothing works for him or her. Every step he or she takes fails. And I'm trusting the Almighty God today. That the Almighty God Himself will fight your battles for you. We are refer this kingdom is not present in your life. The Lord God Himself will set you free. Listen to Leviticus chapter 26, verse 19 to 20. Leviticus 26, verse 19 to 20. When that spirit is permitted, to operate in the life of a man, they will make the earphone of that man as iron. And the heart of such a woman, they will make it as brass. 
For such a woman, they will not allow their land to yield increase. They will make sure that the land will not produce any fruit. It's their land. They've cultivated it. But because they will make their effort as iron and their heart as brass, nothing works for them despite their sweating and toiling and laboring. Ah, I want you to call upon the Lord. Say, Father, every spirit of not in oppression in my life, I cast it out today. In the name of Jesus, in that name that is above every other name, the spirit that will make someone effort to be as iron, ah, to make somebody out to be as brass, that will not allow the feed of a man to yield an increase. I reject you today. I cast you out today. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray that prayer with all your heart. Maleka Santare. Tarombo to rekasatia. Call upon the Lord. Every spirit of nothing oppression in my life. I cast you out. I reject you. I bind you. I destroy you. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of nothing. Get out of my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I have a good news for you. According to Isaiah chapter 41. Verse 18, listen to what the Almighty God says there. Isaiah 41, verse 18, the Almighty God says, I will open rivers in high places and fountain in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and dry land springs of water. Ah, you are going to call upon the Lord. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Every kingdom of no, every spirit of nothing, assigned to frustrate my life, cancel it now. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Hey, Lord God, your promise is yell and amen. You have told me right now that my desert will begin to experience spring of water and the dryness will be no more. Therefore, Every spirit of dryness, every spirit of wilderness, every spirit of desert in my life. Your time is over. In the name of Jesus, pray with all your heart. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, open the fountain of your river into the wilderness of my life. Certify my land with your own garden of Eden. In the name of Jesus, pray that prayer with your own. Fountain of river. Let the wilderness of my life, O oh God, begin to experience your river. In the name of Jesus, certify my land with your own garden of Eden. In the name of Jesus, say, Father, from today, in the name of Jesus, create a conducive environment for my satisfaction to the glory of your name. In the name of Jesus, let God hear your prayer. Let a conducive environment be created from today for my satisfaction to the glory of your name. Right there in my house, right there in my place of work, right there in my community, wherever I am, let a conducive environment be created for my satisfaction to the glory of your name. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Ah. I join my faith with yours today. And I declare and I declare that every spirit of nothing not present in your life, every spirit of nothing that has been assigned to render your effort fruitless, to end, render your effort powerless, their time is over. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord God himself, who had made that promise, we begin to open rivers in high places. And your desert will begin to experience rivers of water. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The second kingdom they operate with is the kingdom in charge of near 
success syndrome. In this realm, the kingdom of nothing operates in such a way and in such a manner that you will be allowed to plant. You will, be, you will not be stopped at all to have your, plant, uh, your, your seed planted. But when the time of harvest comes, they will make sure you reap nothing. This kingdom, general lunat, near success syndrome. These are the people who come to the point of their breakthrough and suddenly crash out. Near success syndrome is when one comes to the point where you are 99% sure of success, only to encounter failure and disappointment at the end. You see the example in Georgi chapter 6. As we are going to pray right now, in Judges chapter 6, verse 2 to 6, the Midianites will not say, the people of Israel will not plant. They will not even say their plants will not germinate. But when the time of harvest comes, the Bible said they will come in multitude. In fact, the Bible referred to them, let me read verse 5, for they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came at grasshoppers for multitudes. For both they and their camel were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. For that reason, in verse 6, the people of Israel, the Bible says, was greatly improvised because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto God. The Lord Hear their prayers. The Lord will hear your prayer today. Many, many a day. They are just right there. And they will seem as if they are not laboring at all. They are not working at all. But because the time of harvest, something will just happen to take away whatever they need as what is called the proceed of their labor. I want you to call upon the Lord because according to the word of God, in Psalm 49, verse 17, I mean, Isaiah 49, rather, verse 17, Isaiah 49, 17, listen to what the Almighty God has said concerning his promise. I quote, your sons shall make haste. I believe you are saying amen to that. Your destroyers and those who let you waste shall go away from you. That is Isaiah 49, 17. The Bible says, your destroyers and those who led you waste shall go away from you. Ah, I want you to call upon the Lord. Please, the people of Israel, they cried unto the Lord, and the Lord delivered them from the power of Midianites. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, separate me from all the wasters of life and destiny. Pray that prayers. There are wasters of lives. There are wasters of destinies. Almighty God, separate me today from them all. In the name of Jesus, all the wasters of life, all the wasters of destiny, let them be totally be taken away from me. You are said in your word, according to that Isaiah chapter 14, verse 17, that my destroyers, and those who let me waste shall go away from me. Therefore, Father, in the name of Jesus, separate me today from all the wasters of life and destiny. In the name of Jesus, cry to God right now. The people of Israel, they cry to God, and God heard them. The Lord listened to them. The Lord rescued them. The Lord delivered them. It is your tongue. Cry to God right now. Say, Father God, every power, every power, wherever they are, who are wasters of life and destiny, separate him from them. In the name of Jesus. Loud and clear, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, every spirit of near social syndrome, terminate it today. In the mighty name of Jesus, every spirit of near social syndrome, terminate it today. Pray that prayer with all your heart. The Lord answers prayers. 
every spirit of necessary kingdom, let it be terminated today. Let it be terminated today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let God hear your voice. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, every attack that produces any form of labor loss in my life, let it come to an end today. They will no more prosper. In the name of Jesus, every attack that has been in charge of labor loss in my life, in the name of Jesus, your time is over. Your time is over. Your time is over. Your time is over. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your whole name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. In that name that is above all other names, Jesus, whatever it have been the power, whatever has been that strength anywhere, that have been causing your labor loss in life, that have been making you experience near success syndrome, when your hands is about to touch it and somehow something happens, and that will be the end of so. I decree to your life that from today onward, no more failure. In the name of Jesus, no more disappointment. In the name of Jesus, Every power that has been setting you backward, their time is over. In the name of Jesus, no more downward movement in your life. In the name of Jesus, no more backwardness in your life any longer. In the name of Jesus, I command your life to begin to move forward. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The third kingdom, that the spirit of nothing works with. They are known as the kingdom in charge of toiling. The kingdom of toiling. In this realm of oppression, the kingdom of nothing will make it hard a man that is a working man to be considered as a lazy man. It will make the wise to look like a fool. In most cases, they sweat for nothing. You see the classical example in the life of Peter according to what we have in Luke chapter 5, verse 5. Peter himself confessed that fact. Simon Peter says, say the Bible in that Luke 5, 5, Master, we have toiled all the night and we have taken nothing. We've toiled all the night. We've taken nothing. Peter, to fail in that field of fishing, a particular spirit was working against him. And that's the reason why. When the matter Jesus appeared in the morning, that spirit disappeared. Where there had been nothing, they caught so much that their net began to break. I stand upon this exalted altar today to cancel, to curse, to destroy, and to uproot. Every spirit of toiling in your life, in the mighty name of Jesus. Isaiah 45, verse 19. Isaiah 45, 19. There the almighty God speaks expressly. And there God says, I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. Labor laws, tiny, had never been part of God's kingdom. When we are talking about working for nothing, that is not in God's kingdom. Tiny, sweating, is not in his kingdom. When the almighty God engages the surface of someone, ah, he pays salary. This God, 
pays salary. This God compensates a man adequately. Say, you cannot seek me in vain. So therefore, we are refer you meet with the Almighty God. Labor laws will become a stranger. I want you to call upon the law. But how you are right there, you have been toiling. You are right there, you have been sweating with nothing to suffer it. Say, Father. Let him hear your voice. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus, the spirit that hindered the expected output, despite the needed input, let it be removed today. In the name of Jesus, pray that prayer with all your heart. That spirit that hinders the expected output, despite all the needed input that are put in place, let that spirit be removed right now. Oh, yes, Lord. Let that spirit be removed right now. The spirit of labor loss, the spirit of toiling, be removed now. Be removed now. Be removed now. I can't see you. I approach you. I approach you. I approach you. I approach you. Pray right now. Pray right now. Malako Sotori. Tareke Laraba Kosodo. Thank you, Father. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, from today, let me begin to operate. Under your principle and supervision. Pray that prayer. Lord, let me begin to operate under your own principle, under your own supervision. Because you have said, I have never told anyone to walk with me in vain, to serve me in vain, to follow me in vain. Therefore, Lord, let me begin to operate from today under your supervision, under your standard, under your principle. In the mighty name of Jesus, let me find myself in your home field, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I join my faith with your faith today. And by the authority of the word of God, and by the power in the name of Jesus, with the efficacy of the blood of the Lamb, I hereby decree that every spirit of toiling in your life is over. No more toiling. Ah, because to toil is to work so hard with nothing to show for it. A little step taken by you from today, the Lord God himself will crown with great success. In the name of Jesus, I decree to your life right away that in that name that is above every other name, no more labor, Lord, no more toiling. When Peter met with the law, despite all the failure of all the night, success arrived. As you call upon the Lord today, failure will become a stranger to you. Toiling will be far, far away from your experience. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Daddy, because it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, when the spirit of nothing adjoined his end together to operate with three kingdoms that we have discovered, this spirit of nothing, through this kingdom, they have agents that they operate. Let's see some of the agents that were engaged, whose services have been engaged in those kingdoms that we have mentioned. Number one is forgetfulness. I have told you that by the time we finish today, the Lord God himself will have set you free from spirit of nothing. Forgetfulness. In Genesis chapter 40, verse 14 to 23, Genesis chapter 40, verse 14 to 23. You remember that particular person that Joseph met right there in the prison. After the dream had interpreted, the chief butler was rescued and he was restored. Then, before he left 
Joseph appealed to him. Please remember me. Brethren, do you know that the chief butler forgot Joseph? Let me ask you a question. If everyone you have helped in life have been able to remember you now, will you be a level where you are? This your hand assigned so many letters of promotion. You've recommended so many people to certain posts. And your word have been honored on behalf of certain people. Now, how many of these people have been able to remember you? It is a spirit, the spirit of forgetfulness. You are going to pray with all your heart today because by the special grace of God, you will be remembered. In the name of Jesus, Call upon the Lord. Say, Lord, open my book of remembrance from above. And those that have forgotten me here or not, let them begin to remember me. I wonder if that chief butler didn't remember Joseph. Joseph wouldn't have been brought out of prison. Many of us, we are in prison. One way or the other, Financial imprisonment in one way or the other. And right there, certain people are there who help. But they have, they, will not, they have not been able to remember us. Father God, let everyone that I have in life begin to remember me now. In the name of Jesus, I pray every spirit of forgetfulness, the spirit that, that will not allow all those that have helped all those are promoted, all those have lifted, the spirit that we say, they will not remember me. I remove that spirit. Let them now begin to remember me in the name of Jesus. Loud and clear, call upon the Lord. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, please remember me today and let those who have forgotten me begin to remember me. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Father God, remember me today. And those who have forgotten me, let them begin to remember me. In the name of Jesus, pray that prayer. The Lord answers prayers. He will answer your prayers. In the name of Jesus, loud and clear say, Father, every affliction through the spirit of forgetfulness, let it come to an end today. In the name of Jesus, many have been afflicted now. Because they have been totally forgotten. The people to lift them up, the people to help them, the people to alleviate their problems, they've forgotten them. Father God, I decree right now that every affliction through the spirit of forgetfulness, let it come to an end today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I join my faith with your faith today. And I care by decree, be remembered. In the name of Jesus, be remembered. Let the doors, the gate, the fire of your remembrance be open for you today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The second agent, they make use in that kingdom in order to make a man to be perpetually operate with nothing. Is the spirit of hatred. Right there, hatred. In Proverbs 10 12, Proverbs 10 12, hatred will bring up strife. We are referred to any form of hatred. People will begin to fight against you. In Psalm 109, verse 3, Psalm 109, verse 3. There the Bible said they compassed me about also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. Anywhere there is hatred, people will fight one another or each other without any cause. Ah, 
by the special grace of God, according to the word of God, that he can make our enemy to be our enemy rather to become a friend. The same God will put an end to every spirit of hatred against you today in the name of Jesus. When the man is hated, you yourself can see it in the place of where you are hated. Your family, you are hated. In the community, you are hated. What render can they help? And if God wants to help a man, you use another man to bring whatever that's the money to come and meet all his needs. So if everybody hates you, then we will help you. I want you to call upon the Lord. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, deliver me, vindicate me from those that hate me. Pray that prayer. Deliver me, O oh God. You, have, you can make my enemy to be at peace with me. Every spirit of hatred against my life can't it today in the name of Jesus. Can't it today in the name of Jesus. Can't it today in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, arrive by yourself and answer all who hate me in the name of Jesus. Arrive by yourself and answer them. Oh God, there can be no progress in my life, wherever I'm hated, there will be no promotion in my life whenever I'm hated. Therefore, arise, O God, and fight for me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Ah, I join my faith with yours today. And I uproot Every seed of hatred out of your life. By the power and the blood of Jesus, I erase from your life every mark of hatred in the name of Jesus. Anywhere you go from today, you will be cherished. You will be embraced. You will be loved in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Another agent to you to make a man to operate in perpetual nothing is envy. Envy. Ah. The Bible says in Proverbs 27, verse 4, Proverbs 27, verse 4, say, who can stand before envy? And when you get to Acts 7, 9, Acts 7, 9, find out why they sold Joseph into Egypt because of envy. The Bible says, and the patriarchs, that is the forefather, more with envy, sold Joseph into prison. Ah. The Lord has a promise for every one of us. And I want you to listen attentively to that Isaiah chapter 11, verse 13. Isaiah 11, 13. Say, the envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversary of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. In other words, brothers will dwell together, friends will dwell together without envy. What is different between envy and hatred? You just hate a man for nothing sake. Envy is when a man has something that you don't have. And you are asking, why is that to know? Why not me? And anytime you are ready to climb the ladder of life with your determination, be ready for, the, for that particular envy. But God is saying here, I will preserve you. I will make sure that you are totally set free from the spirit of envy. I want you to call upon the Lord. Say, my father, my father, in the name of Jesus, let the spirit of envy dwell in the life of people around me depart from them today. Pray that prayer. The Bible has said there, I said there in that Isaiah eleven thirteen, that the envy of Ephraim will depart. The adversary of Judas are cut off. Ephraim are not envy Judah, and Judas are not fixed Ephraim. 
In other words, the Lord has a way of uprooting the spirit of envy from the life of people. Pray with your prayer and with all your heart. Almighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus, let the spirit of envy be uprooted from my life. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father God. Pray that, O oh Lord, every spirit of unanimity, every spirit of hatred, in the life of those around me, drive them away today. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Finally, they also make use of the spirit of sickness to render a life useless, to produce nothing. Sickness is used to fight everyone and every avenue of progress in a man's life. You bear me witness by the time you consider John chapter 5. You just read all through to verse 13. You say, man, that I've been his poor for 38 years. Ah! He was living a life of nothing. But by the time that man came in contact with Jesus Christ, the spirit of nothing departed from him because that day sickness departed. Particularly when you consider that John chapter 5, verse 8 to 9. John 5, 8 to 9. Jesus just simply told him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man began to walk. The spirit of nothing departed from him. He could, he could now walk and end his living and live a normal life. I want you to pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, every affliction of sickness, every disease that either to hinder my progress in life, your time is over. Pray. Are you rather passing through any form of, of affliction, of sickness in your life? that are rendered the effort in your life to be useless. Sickness will, laugh, will not allow a man to have any progress in life. Pray right now that in the name of Jesus, every affliction or sickness, every disease, or oh, that has hindered to, with that, oh Lord, hinder my progress. Your time is over in the name of Jesus. Your time is over in the name of Jesus. Loud and clear, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, I'm rising up from the bondage of sickness. From today, I begin to make progress. My life, you have been commanded by Jesus Christ. Begin to arise now. Begin to move forward. In the name of Jesus, arise now. Begin to move forward. In the name of Jesus, sickness will never cast you down again. Sickness will never, never hinder you again. It is your time. My life to make progress in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And I join my faith with your faith right away. Whatever that sickness operating your life and system to cause your life to begin to produce nothing. Ha! In the name of Jesus, the appointment of that sickness is over. Either that sickness in your blood, on your vein, your artery, or in any of your organ, or it, have, it has affected any of your organ. The appointment of that sickness is over in the name of Jesus. And we rebuke the power that be, that saying you'll be tied down. No to any form of deformity in your life. No to any form of sickness in your life in the name of Jesus. Be set free indeed right now and let the name of the Lord be glorified. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Before the final prayer, we can see that in this life, there are time wasters. Time wasters. But when anyone comes to the Lord, suddenly you are going to discover. Because the master Jesus Christ has said, I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness, but we have the light of life. In other words, it's going to endow your life what is known as the fine speed. That's what the Almighty God does. So right there where you are, don't allow your life to be a waste any longer. 
wasters of destiny and life, they are all over the place. And perhaps you can ask yourself a question. Since all these years, how far have I been able to go? That will tell you a, 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 a little about what you have been hearing. So wherever you are, do yourself a glorious, a good, to bow your head right now and surrender your life to Jesus. And he's ready to save you. He's ready to deliver you. He's ready to set you free. That is the Lord Jesus we are talking about. Bow your head now. Commit yourself to him. And he will set you free. Father God, all those who are giving their life to you right now, according to your promise, let your blood cleanse their sins away. Let your power redeem them, O God. With their name written in the book of life, and the power to serve you to the end release upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I believe you have done that by the special grace of God. God has heard you and he will definitely make your life to become meaningful. All the contact details will be displayed on the screen immediately after. We love to hear from you. To God be the glory. Every one of us, let it of our hand to pray. Father God, we thank you for today, for your faithfulness, for your mighty hands, and of course, the way you have been fighting our battles. One more time we decree that every spirit of nothing operating our life and destiny uproot it today in the name of Jesus. And we have yielded ourselves unto the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who has all the power to make our life to be more meaningful. I pray therefore, Move forward in the law. Make progress in the law. Fulfill destiny in the law. And by the special grace of God, whatever is that power that say you will not fulfill destiny, we approve it now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shout, Arisani, Hallelujah.